Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to FPV holding the radio correctly. So there is really no correct slash incorrect way to hold the radio. You just want to make sure it's consistent every single time so that you can have the most consistent flight performance. Now, what is going to make your holding the radio consistent uh, is probably going to be down to what technique you use to hold the radio. So there's a couple different things that we use to hold the radio. Um, not only do we have things like this lanyard, like shadow my face yeah whatever so that lanyard so something goes around your neck and kind of stabilizes the radio there's all different types of radios there's a radio that are big they call them like tray radios where you can actually rest your wrists on them um, and then there's small radios like this one we talked about in the previous video um, that are more shaped like an xbox controller and obviously all of these different radios are going to cater towards certain styles of how you hold the gimbal and how you interact with the buttons so let's just go ahead and talk about this style and and then we'll talk about like this style which is the kind that i use um, obviously i can use this and that uh, it's pretty universal between platforms however there are some platforms um, that are a little more suited towards certain styles so we'll talk about the two different styles and then i'll go into the two different radios that i have here and like why you would use a lanyard versus why you wouldn't or it's, it's all personal preference but i'll just talk about the scenarios where you might use one of these versus the other so first of all we have this radio which is the tango 2 from team black sheep um, this thing is very much shaped like a PlayStation or Xbox controller. So naturally, you're probably going to go directly to holding the radio like this and then using your thumbs to uh, manipulate the gimbals. Now, with that being said, it's it's pretty ergonomic. Like you, you're really not going to find any other way that's going to feel better other than you know using this with your thumbs. Um, but there is another style called a pinch style where you would hold the radio kind of like this and use the sides of the gimbal and you have your index finger actually incorporated into moving the gimbal. So now you have your thumb and your index finger. And this can be awkward for some people, especially depending on the shape of the remote. Like I said, those big tray table remotes, they're actually a little more advantageous to use with a pinch versus the trying to get your thumb. It's just not as ergonomic. So it kind of depends on the size of the radio and then how you were originally learning. So if you're learning one way and then you try to switch to another, it can be very difficult. So if you're used to flying thumbs or you're used to using your thumbs on an ergonomic style radio like this, then it's probably better that you just stick with that. However, when I started flying, I noticed that depending on the, di uh, the discipline of FPV or uh, RC helicopters, like 3D helicopters or 3D planes or iMac, um, there's a lot of different styles and a lot of people actually use different styles depending on what genre of RC they're in. Um, and I noticed that 3D helicopter pilots, which I uh, aspired to be like the most precise pilots out there. I mean, I'm not going to take away from 3D plane pilots. I know some phenomenal 3D plane pilots and some phenomenal helicopter pilots that fly thumb. Um, but a majority of the guys out there that fly really, really, really precisely are using a pinch style method. Now they do hold the radio kind of like this. So it aids in the fact that we have these big square things and how they're holding them is making them a little bit more ergonomic. And plus it's kind of like a cool factor to have your radio like flat on your stomach. Um, assuming you have a flat stomach <laughs> and uh anyways yeah so that's kind of the way that i learned was i wanted to pick up a, a method that was going to be a little bit more precise whether or not it is it's really up in the air but the fact that i thought it would be i tried to change so i you know started playing halo and playing xbox and stuff back in the day so i was pretty geared towards learning thumbs so i started flying thumbs and then a couple months later i started like trying to figure out how to do pinch and pinch was super hard so i ended up kind of making up my own thing and I call it like a hybrid pinch. I didn't necessarily steal this idea or someone didn't show it to me. It just kind of happened. It felt it was what felt natural to me. And I now have found out that there are plenty of other people in the world that do this too. So it wasn't like I saw it. I just tried it and it worked for me. So whatever is going to work for you, just figure out something that's comfortable and that you can consistently do every single time you pick up the radio. Because if you do something different every time, then you're obviously going to have a different experience and you're not going to be as precise or consistent so for me a pinch is here a thumb is like this and a hybrid is like where your thumb is on top and your index finger is kind of guiding it so if it slips you have something to kind of guide you back to where the uh, stick end is where if your thumb slips off then you're just kind of like fiddling in the air and if you're pinching it's rare that you're gonna actually 
uh, slip off the gimbal. So there is adv advantages to pinching versus thumbing and then versus hybrid. So kind of hybrids in the middle. If you can't go from a full thumb to a full pinch, then it might be somewhere to try in the middle. Um, it'll give you a little bit more precision, but not as much as uh, pinching. So again, we talked about different types of radios. I'll talk about the other style radio right now. So this is the ergonomic thumb style. This is gonna be easy for people to fly with thumbs that are maybe coming from a gaming background. And then something like this is more of a traditional RC style radio. Um, and these work well with thumbs too, like this. However, sometimes it can be a little far to get to certain corners. So pinching can be also a little bit more cumbersome on something like this but a hybrid pinch where you kind of pull your hands up on the radio, um, you can get all the corners and it seems to be very precise on a full throw gimbal like this where you have this big gap between zero and full throttle and you know vice versa depending on what uh, axis you're moving on. So there's that style radio um, and then the big tray style like I talked about, those are gonna be you know using a lanyard which I'll talk about right now. Um, but yeah, everything about that is going to be personal preference. So don't let someone say, hey, this is better than that or this is worse than that. It really comes down to what you're comfortable with and either what you've learned on or what you're experienced with. So this is nothing new. It's just a lanyard. It's something that goes around your neck. Our branded ethics ones have this little foam pad in the back to kind of keep it down from chafing the back of your neck if you have any issues with that. Um, and then you have this style clip on the end here. Now what this is gonna do is literally just clip into the radio and hold the radio for you. So this aids in depending on how you hold the radio, you can adjust this to different lengths. I usually recommend having it right around your belt line um, or a little under or a little over depending if you like to wear a big belt buckle or something like that. Um, but you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna usually use this as like a weight so it's you can push down on the radio kind of and keep tension between your neck and then that stabilizes the radio on like a third point so you're not only it's like shooting with a camera you usually like tripod or use something to tripod yourself to get a little bit more purchase on the fact that you're stable with three three points versus two points um, and you also don't have to hold the radio up if it's a heavier radio that can obviously kind of cut into your fatigue level while flying even though this isn't super fatiguing but every time you have to you know hold up a 20 depending on what it is a 10 pound radio some of them actually do weigh 10 pounds um, you're having to hold that up and fly like it's just a little bit more uh, comfortable to have something kind of resting off your neck so again you pull down on the radio and then you use the lanyard and then if you drop it it's really not that big of a deal so depending if you have a really light grip on the radio i know some guys that squeeze the crap out of the radio and they're never going to drop it regardless if they have a lanyard or not and they just wear it because it's cool or they wear it because of an extra safety feature and then some guys i know they're like barely holding on to the radio and if someone walked up to and brushed their arm they would drop the radio and it would be game over because this is, you know, these are pretty fragile. You don't want to drop these things for more than about a foot or it's going to start breaking stuff. So again, this type of radio, um, for me, like I said in a previous video, if I'm flying like this, um, that's why I don't fly this radio because it's got this cutout right here and it kind of cuts around the inside of my stomach and puts the gimbals too close. And I feel like I'm all scrunched up like this flying. So I'll just show you what I look like <laughs> when I have my, uh, my typical radio. And I'll show you why it feels, or why I prefer this style over that. So when I put this on like this, I rest it on my stomach like that. My hands are in a very ergonomic position and I'm flying, you know, essentially like, like this. Essentially flying like that. I'm putting pressure down to keep the uh, radio stabilized. I don't have the best grip on the controller. I have my hands going around the back of it like this. But again, this is, I can do this without a, uh, without a lanyard, but some people that fly pinch actually don't, they can't, they like can barely hold the radio. And especially if you have to flip a switch or something, they're just putting like side pressure on it. And if it, you know, slips or does anything, gets hot out, um, you can slip and drop the radio where I have my pinky under the back to kind of stabilize it. So there's a lot of different ways to hold a radio. I just wanted to go over the basics with you because that is something that if you do wrong in the beginning and then you go out and fly a couple months later after you've been flying that way for a long time and someone's like, hey, why do you do it like that? Well, you know, it would be better if you just knew the options in the beginning and then you adjust it accordingly rather than just doing whatever you feel 
uh, whatever feels natural and then at realizing at some point later on that, oh, well, what I do actually has a downside because I can't fully extend to this particular point in the gimbal, which is going to take away from the full range of motion. So again, not saying that there is a right or wrong way. I'm just giving you the general guidelines of most people that fly RC and you can take with it and uh, run with whatever part of information or whatever technique you want to. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week or day or month or life. Have a great life. I'm sorry if I seem uninterested or